This is an electroless nickel plating bath and it's kind of insane how it works. Basically, if you put objects in here, the objects will be coated with metal. When I found out that this was possible, I immediately got excited because last year I resin printed a golf driver head to see if it would work and totally exploded it over the driving range. So after remembering this, I thought to myself, if I can somehow coat a golf driver in metal, it might make it way stronger so it won't explode like last time. After coming up with that extremely realistic goal, it was now time to become an alchemical mastermind so I could figure out exactly how to do this. It turns out people have been coating plastic with metal since the 19th 60s in order to make car parts and things like that and there are certain types of plastic that work better than others the main thing that makes a plastic suitable for electroless nickel plating is if a water droplet can easily spread across the surface this is called hydrophilicity hydrophilicity at this point i realized i needed to find a plastic that was attracted to water and it just so happens that they specifically make this water washable 3d printing resin and it has polar molecules in it so it dissolves nicer in water so so at this point the idea seemed good, but I still needed to see if this was actually going to work. I ordered some water washable resin from Soriatech and printed out some test samples. Because the resin had been cured, the polar molecules that were attracted to the water were all cross-linked and tied up. In order to free them up, I was going to have to dissolve the surface, and that would require the use of a very nasty chemical. This is sodium hydroxide or drain cleaner, and it is an absolutely terrible chemical. If it somehow splashes in your eyes, it can permanently blind you. That's not sketchy at all. I made sure to use as much PPE as I had, and then I soaked the test samples for different periods of time. After soaking them, I applied a water droplet to the surface. As you can see, the samples that soaked for an hour had the water droplet completely coat the surface. Hydrophilicity. You can see how that compares to the regular resin, which also soaked for an hour. So yeah, drain cleaner. This is what drain cleaner does. So now it was time to test whether my theory was going to work or not. The first step was to assemble a wind chime. I went full Walter White mode. I had just watched like 16 Nile Red videos, so I was completely hyped up and ready to go. I started the different chemical and rinsing baths. If you want to know like the full process, I made a full breakdown that's available to all my patrons. So check that out if you're interested. That really helps support me, so thank you. But anyway, it was time to coat things in metal finally. In a matter of seconds, plastic would be turned to metal right before my eyes. But then I realized I had messed something up because there was no metal on these. The test samples were darker but still translucent and I had no idea what the reason behind that was. I thought it might have been the heat that had turned them that color so I made a heated water bath to see if it was the heat that was causing the discoloration but it was definitely not the heat that was changing the color. So at this point I was super discouraged. I thought the project was just like a complete failure at this point and the issue was simply I was just using the wrong type of plastic. To test this out I tried coating the samples with different types of plastic and I got similar results. Then I thought getting the bath hotter might help it so I bought a different heating plate got the same exact results then finally I realized what the real problem was the company that I had ordered this solution from sent me the wrong solution they sent me reducer solution instead of nickel plating solution and when I looked it up on their website they don't even sell reducer solution so I definitely didn't order the wrong thing they must have just sent this to me by accident which is kind of frustrating because this stuff is expensive and it took a while to ship so I went back and reordered the same thing that I had ordered the first time and it it showed up leaking into a bag. I tried emailing customer service but didn't get a response. So yeah, buyer beware if you buy anything from these guys. But yeah, thank you for listening to me complain. Let's get back to the plot. The new solution looked absolutely beautiful. I don't know, I just love that color. Like, it looks like it would be delicious to drink it, but it would probably kill you, so. I realized that the discoloration on my previous samples was actually just palladium, and that these samples were actually just ready to be plated. I had already done all of the prep work. All I had to do was heat up the bath and drop them in. It was now time to plate metal onto plastic for the first time. All of the bubbles made it look like a Jones carbonated soda. It's been so long since I had one of those. And here are the results. The top row was done with the lower temperature you can see they turned out a lot darker than the bottom row and the first column is the one that i etched and yeah you can really see there's a noticeable difference the etched version looks super clean it had the least amount of splotchiness and also interestingly enough the new surface was conductive it looked like it was about a few ohms per millimeter hey that's pretty good so now that i had unlocked the alchemical incantations to turn plastic into metal it was now time to 3d print a driver head i went to goodwill and picked up a driver for four dollars and cut its head off 
so I could design a driver based on its head size. Next, I had to learn this new software called Rhino, which was a pain in the ass, but it's good for creating lattices and stuff like that. I wanted the driver to have a lattice incorporated into it because one of the properties of electroless nickel plating is that it can evenly coat hard to reach areas. And I wanted to test this out to see if that was actually true. The driver head turned out pretty good and it was now time to use drain cleaner again. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of before and after the edge. On the right side, you can see how much bigger the drops are and they naturally just want to coat the entire surface. Plating it in the palladium gave it a honeycomb look. Again, for some reason it looks oddly delicious and I, I don't know why that is. After eight minutes, it was done cooking, fresh off the press, piping hot and ready to go. A brand new driver head ready to drive a ball 300 plus yards. All that was left to do was to use a two-part epoxy to combine the head with the shaft. I used JB Weld Plastic Bonder. This stuff always works great, but it kind of just gets everywhere. And after 24 hours, my golf driver was complete. It was now time to smash a golf ball 300 plus yards down the range. At this point, my hopes were high that the golf club was not going to shatter like it did last time. It's gone. <laughs> And unfortunately, one hit exploded the golf driver. Damn, what an absolute failure. The lattice was gone, but the club was still there. Ready. And my little brother was actually Ooh. able to take a few shots before the rest of it exploded. <laughs> <laughs> to add insult it's to injury, gone. the golf driver decided to flip us off in the end. Despite failing completely, I still had one more trick up my sleeve. The lattice was obviously a terrible idea and also not very aerodynamic. I decided to simplify the design and make a seven iron and I added a little Voronoi pattern on it just to make it look cooler. I quickly nickel plated it and the results were kind of interesting. The backside plated nicely and it was also still conductive which wasn't shocking. The weird part was the Voronoi pattern created these conductive islands. Apparently the nickel doesn't like to plate on hard edges so anything embossed won't really be electrically connected to the rest of the model which was disappointing because my plan was to use a nickel coating as a conductive base layer so I could utilize regular electroplating to apply a layer of thick copper over the nickel. So I ended up ditching the Voronoi pattern and went for a regular looking golf wedge. And honestly, this is the best finish I think I had so far. I mean, if you ignore the splotchiness on the backside, it pretty much looks like an actual golf wedge made out of metal. In order to connect the club to my power supply, I used some copper tape. I then hooked everything up and let it plate for about 12 hours. This is the result after about 10 minutes of sanding. Some weird vertical lines kind of formed. Weirdly enough, you can see both wedges failed to plate in roughly the same areas which means the splotchiness in the nickel plating process probably isn't random, but I'm still not sure why some areas plated perfectly and some didn't. Maybe it's geometry based or something like that. I honestly have no idea. The copper wedge weighed roughly eight grams more. My hope was that eight grams would be enough to prevent this thing from exploding. The next day I took the club out to a grassier area with the goal of getting at least one good shot before it inevitably exploded. It kinda already shattered. Is it recording? Yeah. Oh, it actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> I got a piece of that one.
in the end, the wedge ended up going farther than the ball, but at least I was able to get two shots at like 50% power before it exploded, which is pretty good considering water washable resin is known for being extremely brittle. So yeah, coating a 3D print in metal doesn't make it indestructible, unfortunately, and it's very hard to get a nice even coating on complex geometry. But if you want to add conductivity for like a satellite dish or make something that just looks like it's metal, electroless nickel plating is very interesting. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please smash the like and subscribe. Thank you for sticking with me all the way to the end. Uh, have an amazing day.